Mira. Hi, everybody. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to the live chat today. I am really excited to welcome Alex from The Secret History of Living in Your Aquarium. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. I am so excited to chat with you. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem whatsoever. But congratulations. First off, congratulations on your new house. Thank you. I'm excited because we've got a, a about, I don't know, a, a quarter of an acre of land in the mm -hmm. city, which is hard to find. Um, and, and surprising we got it anyways, but it's going to be definitely want to do a lot of uh, native fish, you know, um, out in the backyard. That's kind of the plan. So, yeah. I was surprised how well they breed outside until I tried it. Yeah. It's yeah. More fry in like three months than I do all year inside. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Tubbing. I mean, even with, you know, um, like I've seen like with white cloud minnows and like golden top minnows and, um, you know, meteor minnows, all the, a lot of the cyprinids too, you know, the CPDs and all that kind of stuff. They, they'll all just, if you throw in a bunch of, uh, nodja grass or duckweed and water lettuce and just let them do their thing, like check on them at the end of summer and there's just a bunch of babies, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, my rosy red minnows I have, I've tried to keep them inside, and I've never had them reproduce. They just kind of disintegrate. But when I move them outside, they are enormous. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I've I've never kept um, cold water fish, I guess I would call it, um, mm -hmm. more than just a couple days anyways. And so that's kind of what I want to do at the new house is I'd like to have some fish that need like 40 or 50 degree water, mm -hmm. um, like some of the native fish in the streams and things around here in, in the, you know, Northwest. So mm -hmm. we'll see. I really want to keep sticklebacks. Um, they're okay. really interesting little fish. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're very bland or boring looking, I guess, by most standards, but they're mating, um, rituals or I guess behavior uh is super fascinating so mm -hmm. um yeah I really want to kind of do a they they dig burrows that are shaped um like an x marks the spot from above if you're looking at it and they're kind of a u shaped underneath the surface wow. and mm -hmm. the males actually find a female that they like and they size them up to the millimeter and they make a tapered tunnel and so when they, they, and then they agitate the female and when she gets mad enough that she chases them around, they dart into the tunnel and she sees that it goes through and out the other side and sees the male did it. And so she'll follow and they trap that female in the tunnel that they've been preparing. And it's just, just enough to like wedge her in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have another side tunnel that comes to, to it and they're able to then like basically headbutt her side and she lays eggs that triggers the egg laying process. And then, uh, basically he, uh, pulls out, usually it's, um, sticks and, and leaves that are kind of making up part of the tunnel, like a nest and he'll pull pieces away so that mm -hmm. she can swim through and then she'll wriggle away and swim off as fast as she can. Wow. But, um, uh, then what he'll do is keep pulling pieces away until the whole thing collapses. So that way the eggs are also buried under about two or three inches of sand. So I'd love to do a cutaway where you could actually yeah. try to see that process, you know? So. How are you this smart? Like, <laughs> oh, do you, I don't know do, about that. Do you just read all day? Like, do you do nothing but read? <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> that's pretty true. I mean, uh, you know, I've always loved learning, like loved learning new things. Um, I can tell. Every day, you know, that's a goal is to learn uh -huh. something new. Um, oddly enough, I will forget people's names or phone numbers, but mm -hmm. I'll remember like the percentage of, you know, fish in this river that have this gene or whatever, you know, just weird, uh -huh. weird things like that stick with me. Um and honestly, I used to retain information a lot better. Um, like one time I'd read through it, I'd kind of build a mental, like a literal picture in my head. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'd kind of 
like um it's it's hard to explain but i i had um it's, it's a, a way of thinking where like um you imagine a room and you mm -hmm. imagine like um a couch and a bed and a chair and a vase and a tv and so when you remember a story everything has a visual cue mm -hmm. to it yes. and so um it's kind of like a memorization mechanism that I learned when I was younger, but I'll use that a lot when I'm researching something that, you know, we're going to talk about on the channel or whatever. And, um, since, I, uh, when, when I got struck by lightning a couple years back, mm -hmm. uh, and had the severe head injury, um, my ability to see that in my head is, is diminished a whole lot. So now it's kind of just, uh, memorizing, uh, without that cue. So, mm -hmm. um, luckily I had a lot of info in there before that seems to still be rattling around somewhere, but, <laughs> um, my short term memory is not what it was. So that's been a struggle. Um, but yeah. Well, when I watch your videos and your live streams, I have to watch them multiple times with a notepad and I have <laughs> a biology degree and I'm still like, how does he know that? <laughs> but yeah, he's right. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, I think a lot of it is also just, um, if you can keep your mind open to the connections, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, maybe you'll find a connection and, and then you have to remember less info really like if you can remember for instance right now i'm trying to figure out how to do a video where we talk about um nitrogen and the nitrate cycle and everything and i've been reading about the um agricultural revolution that happened during the industrial revolution mm -hmm. uh basically the ability to get four or five times as much yield out of crops by using ammonium nitrate as a fertilizer mm -hmm. and um so I was thinking about that, and then as that in, – in Tennessee, there was that um, bombing on Christmas that happened, and yeah. that's what he made that out of was fertilizer. And so mm -hmm. thinking about the energy potential in, you know, creating enough food for billions of people around the world or creating enough color and, and growth in your plants – Mm -hmm. or causing algae and all the way to the instant release of it and, and causing an explosion, a literal explosion, um, remembering just the nitrate story is easier than remembering all three other stories. Then you only have to know mm -hmm. a little bit about those because they're all functioning off the same, you know, mm -hmm. biological process. So I think that helps a little bit, but um, I think, that's that's what I love about learning is the finding the connection, you know, um, mm -hmm. between things that don't seem connected. And that's originally that's why I wanted to start my channel. And I was going to stick to that as the format sort of. But mm -hmm. it also kind of became um, more of a vlog or just kind of like, well, this is what's going on in my fish room or in my tanks right now. Um, and. I think a mix of both is kind of where it's landed now. So, yeah. Well, well, I wa I don't remember if it was a live stream or a video, but I watched something, and it was your rimless tank. I think you just have one. You might have more, but you have all that pretty dragonstone in there. And I took a trip like forty five minutes away, and I'm like, I need all your dragonstone. <laughs> <laughs> and I came home, and I tried to make it look good because I have a. It's not a real rimless tank. It's a tank I got at a yard sale that didn't have a rim on it anymore. And I'm like, sure. oh, this is beautiful. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to get some inspiration. And still, <laughs> you take, you're, you're talented. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. That's kind of you. I mean, I, there's an analytical part of aquascaping, I think, that huh. you can kind of tear apart. But then there's also just, um, you know, I, I've been a, a, a working artist for mm -hmm. 15 years. So in one medium or another, whether that's murals or tattoos or graphic design or um, sculpture, stage design. So I think that has to have um, informed kind of my sensibilities about that. Mm -hmm. And there's no right way to do it. I mean, do whatever makes you happy. Do whatever works for your aquarium. 
and with the materials you have, but there is definitely kind of an agreed upon um, rhythm or, or, or template for beauty in our society. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. there, there's things that we kind of all sort of agree are like, Oh, that's, that's good. That's, that's pretty, e even if it's subconscious. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, everybody in this fish fam is so artistic and talented. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, feel like it's like there's something to that because there's all these super talented, just amazing artists in the hobby. And you guys' tanks look equally as good. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. And there's a bunch of them in the chat. Danikin's in here. Yeah, I seen Jack yeah. in here. Kaylor's in here. Greg the Guppy guy's in here. John Larson's here. in here. I mean, it just keeps going and going. Yeah. Thank yeah. Everybody, Petro Man, Big and if you Rizzo. Have any questions, let me know. Just type it in the chat. And Jesse will read it for you. Oh, me. Danikin was saying something about uh, one one type that they have there of minnow that was pretty cool. That was r right up Alex's alley. He was talking about it. It was way back at the beginning when mm -hmm. you two went off on a nice <laughs> tangent. Let's see. Yeah. I'm kind of scrolling through. Um, Where was he at? It was near the top. Is it the fathead minnow? Uh, I think it was right around that. Somebody said they were interested in fathead minnow. And then, oh, Danikin, we have some killer oh, sticklebacks. Stickleback. Yeah, here, Alex. Yep, that's Those it. Those sound cool. Yeah, they're, they're a really neat fish in that um, they also, they look like puffer fish. Uh, from above, like when the females are are um, full of eggs mm -hmm. and ready to spawn, they actually will. Um, they look. It's kind of odd. They look like I don't know the state of Oklahoma or something. <laughs> they <laughs> have this big square body, and then their tail just sticks out. Um, they kind of look like a, a female guppy that's like super bloated. Like if she has something wrong with her, you know, like she's stuck with eggs. Mm -hmm. uh so they're kind of like this box shaped fish within like a tail the females and then the males are just little guys but the the thing that originally drew me to them was that they're a fish that can live out in the ocean and they can live in up to 100 degree water oh, wow. and all the way down to freezing they have a natural um ability to like goldfish, there's something about their blood that they're trying to figure out that is, um, it allows them to uh, take, if they if they bury themselves and they're kind of in, in dormancy for the winter, mm -hmm. they'll bury themselves where they're not going to get eaten by a predator, they'll have enough food that they're not going to starve, and then they can actually, instead of having to, to get air through their gills and breathe constantly, they actually can slow that down and there's some way that they it depends on on the fish and on the process but uh i think with goldfish they're thinking now it's copper i want to say that they actually oxidize the copper in their blood and so they're able to strip the oxygen off the copper and not just the iron and and free floating oxygen in their system so there's some cool stuff, and some of that has some really big applications for humans in theory, you know, um, if we can sort some of those things out. Like natural antifreeze might be able to have an injection like an EpiPen that if, if you're out in the snow and you get lost hiking or snowmobiling. Oh, I know. so would do would that. I definitely injection? need that. Works yeah. In Iowa, he works outside in the snow. I mean, he works outside no matter what, all day, every sure. day. Sure. And when they send them up to Iowa and all, <laughs> it's cold enough here in Missouri. But oh, yeah. It's quite a bit colder where he goes to work. But I'm sure yeah. you're cold. I bet it's, it's probably super cold there today. Uh, it's a it's a little bit above freezing. That's kind of the problem here. Like, I'd rather it just get, like, 20 degrees. 20 degrees feels less cold to me than when it's 35 and raining and windy, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's just... Yeah. It's been 35 and rainy and windy for like a month, two months here. And it's just, uh, it's just that, that damp, like 
chills you to the bone. The humidity is like 80%, you know, and it's, even though it's cold. Um, yeah. So it just feels colder than, than, uh, you know, once, once you've got past freezing, the humidity in the air falls out. So you don't get that, um, that effect of, you know, like when you're wet, your heat conducts off you quicker. So you don't get that effect. So you can actually stay a lot warmer if it's colder out, uh, within about a 20 degree range than if it's actually above freezing. So same with like, you know, snowflakes just fall on you and then you can just brush them off when it's real cold. But mm -hmm. <laughs> when it's rain, it just soaks in. Yeah, so. it's been cold and rainy. Today is just, it's not rainy here today, but it's super windy and just yeah. cloudy and blow. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I'm just curious, how many tanks do you have now? I've watched off and on your channel and right watched here. it. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just watched it growing and yeah. I saw that you had the little sword tails. Uh, with, yeah, sword tails, right? That had babies the other yeah. day. I was a little yeah. overly excited about those fry. If you could. No, they're really cool. <laughs> they're so cute. They're so pretty, even just being born. And I've waited since last February. Those they, those females have been pregnant. It seems like forever, and they just got bigger and bigger. <laughs> and finally, I've been trying to combat. There's so much hair algae in that tank because I have a bad habit of leaving the lights on. And so oh, I yeah. think I I was turning off the lights a lot more this past week. And when I turned them on, I noticed those fry and I was like, <gasps> wow. <laughs> but I think we're up to like mid 20s. I haven't counted for a while. Wow. But yeah. And then That's a have, lot. <laughs> I don't, I always want more, but this uh, is the, the right amount to where I have plenty, but it's not too much that I can't handle right one day it takes us all day but we can do it in one day <laughs> yeah you know my angelfish keep having babies and uh lately they've been getting bigger and bigger batches and they they eat them at they'll get to the wriggler stage mm -hmm. and then they get stressed out or scared or i don't know what the deal is but then they'll eat them when they're free swimming like the second or third day that they're free mm -hmm. swimming they'll eat them they'll just turn and start eating them and, uh, you know, so far it's kind of like, I, I don't like that they have that habit cause I'm going to want them to spawn normally for me once I'm settled in the new house. But right now I, I wouldn't have anywhere to put 300 little babies. So it's kind of like I'm on the edge of my seat every time they do it to see like, am I going to have to take care of these babies and find a spot for them or <laughs> are they just going to eat them again? <laughs> yeah, I, I went to take some of my dad's angelfish. I gave him six and they were tiny and now they're pretty good sized and he says they get along great, but I want some of his angelfish back here <laughs> and it's been, he's got them with neon tetra and I'm like, you know, I, I just need to have two of those back and then he won't give them to me. But I, I've kept angelfish throughout the years, but I've never tried breeding them. So I am curious, like, if you know, how they seem like he's got six and they seem to have pair, like each have a pair. There's like three pairs in there and they all oh, nice. have their own corner. So, but other than that, that's about all I know about angelfish breeding. <laughs> well, you know, I bred them when I was in high school age for a little while, just because they were pretty reliable, like. Mm -hmm. Around that time, I think I was getting like three or four dollars a piece for the babies, wow. but they can have a lot of babies. So, mm -hmm. um, and when you're 14 or 15, that feels like a lot of money, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, now I ha I haven't worried about doing it for profit, but I've just I've the ones I've bred, I've pretty much I'll give away or trade the fry at. Mm -hmm some you know even at like a month old or something and i'll keep mm -hmm. maybe two or three that are looking nice mm -hmm. the the hard part with angels is though the babies look so darn pretty a lot of times when they're young and then they lose that or or it may develop into a new color pattern but you can't really tell like what the mm -hmm. adult pattern is going to be always from the the juvenile pattern so mm -hmm. yeah but that makes sense well kayler wants to know if 
there is a plant that you want that you haven't been able to source and I still have plant clippings from you from a couple years ago, he says. Hey, Bob probably got those four years ago or something now. That's that's cool. How's it going, Bob? Um, yeah, another person that I've, you know, I've since I've been online, uh, he's been in contact with me almost since the very beginning. Him and uh, had another friend named Betsy who's now kind of hanging out in uh, dog tube rather than fish tube. <laughs> she breeds Salukis. So, um, but uh, I would say as far as that goes, um, I want to get a hold of some of the um, Homolomena species. They're really similar to um, the Anubius Petit Nana species, mm -hmm. but they're from, uh, I think they occur on in Java also, but they definitely occur in Borneo and in Sumatra. And uh, they're just this tiny little um, rhizome plant, and they actually flower kind of like, um, more like a plumeria or or a pretty little like um, typical flower, I guess you would say, rather than uh, Anubius, they'll flower, but they have kind of this um, conical um, iris looking bloom on them, yeah. which is cool. But, you know, I, I kind of would love to see a, a, th something that looks just like a real flower underwater, you know, like a real above ground terrestrial flower. So that's one, and then there's another one that I have wanted, which is um, crypt, cryptocorn or uh, cryptocurine, however you want to say it. Uh, Al, Al, albini, that's one that I want. Um, there's an albata and there's an albini, but there's one called red Al, Al, albini or albini, and um, it's, it's a really nice, like, um, kind of, like, dusty texture and it's got kind of like a pinkish purple color and then like a, re a nice just like normal red color to it too wow, and it gets to be a good size crip and it looks kind of like wind daddy in its shape or something you know so it actually can grow up pretty large and there's a lot of red hued plants at the tips and on the ends and things like that but there aren't a ton that the whole plant is actually you know yeah. that so that's one uh, and another one that I've wanted uh, pretty badly and I just haven't seen it in a few years is the the true down away red uh, by the Pogo Stamon um, health health and the uh, down away reds which just mean morning star red in in Thai is like the common name mm -hmm. but there's a couple that people have been selling as um, down away red or down away pink, things like that. But there is a specific uh, collection point from the wild where you get this beautiful burgundy color. And it's like a lime green with burgundy. It looks really wow. bizarre. Um, and you do need CO2 for it, but um, it's still something that I, I had at one point And... Uh, it died. It's a fragile plant, and mm -hmm. I would love to get that one back. I'd love to get um, blood vomit back too. That's another one that has a crazy name, but it's a cool it looking like plant. It's probably super red. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I I've seen it, videos on that one. Have you? I haven't heard of it, and it just sounds like that would be pretty, even though it's a different type of. Name. I know the name is ridiculous, but it's um, it's it basically it looks like a dwarf hair grass or an eriocallan. Um, mm -hmm. And then it has, it looks like somebody in the center spray painted like some red. Like it looks like it kind of is like a dark spot of it. And then it kind of fades off as if it had missed it onto there or something. So it's kind of a cool oh, wow. effect. Yeah. Hmm. So those, those, that would be my answer. Do you guys have one plant? Uh, uh, we we kind of actually just acquired it to, to, well, to see how we do you answered my question in father fish's chat like what two weeks ago about the madagascar bulbs oh yeah yeah, yeah i went okay so <laughs> this is kind of a weird story my mom was closer to that fish store because it's like an hour 45 minutes to an hour away and she was over there so i was like mom i know you don't know anything about 
it's what I'm asking. Just go in there and see. If, <laughs> yeah. They will give you three Madagascar bulbs and that's good. You know, <laughs> just, I know, I know you don't know. So she came out, she's like, well, he went to show me what I needed and I didn't have a clue. So she came home with like six of them. And I was like, okay, well, this is cool. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> but I didn't have a plan for that many. So I was just dropping bulbs in all of my tanks to see which ones have taken. Yeah. And this one, I don't know if I can. Now, was that assorted upon a Geetons or was that like full on Madagascar lace every single one? Every single one, I'm assuming. They've all turned out identical so far they've sprouted oh, wow wow <laughs> this is a dirted tank and it's got uh -huh. sand cap and i don't know if you can see it it's over in this corner it's right here and it's huge oh yeah yeah and then up here this and this is heated this one is got blue ball stratum and sand in it okay it's, it's over here and it's it's only a couple inches tall in that tank and then I'll turn it around over here. This one's a dirted tank with sand cap in it. And it's it's got a heater in it, but it's not heated. Yeah, it's right there in and the corner. And it's right here in the corner. And it's, it's, this is a 55 gallon and it's already up to like right here. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I have another one and it's just a gravel tank. It's this bow front right here on my mess. And it's a cold and it's just gravel and sand and it's in the back and it's quite a, it's growing really well. It's just quite a bit smaller. Sure. So I was like, that's kind of cool how they, they've all grown really well. Cause they, they didn't have but tiny little sprouts. They were barely yeah. sprouting. And no, that's neat. it's kind of neat to watch how they've all kind of, they're all growing really well, but it's all a little bit different in each, <laughs> each tank. <laughs> but those yeah. plants are those dirted tanks, man. There's something, there's something to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you can definitely see the side by side growth change. Okay. Also, you know, having the right light or having a light mm -hmm. that, you know, a light that comes with a tank in a kit versus oh, yeah. something you buy later that's a plant specific light. Boy, is there, there is a big difference there. Yeah. yeah. I so. have a little bit, I have shop lights with light bulbs and then I have yeah. two plant flu ball lights. And then I have a shop light that we just got that's 5,000 lumens. Okay. And then sometimes I use my ring light as an aquarium light. <laughs> Probably works, right? It does. I have a little yeah. light short around here, but there's, yeah, there's a diff. There's, I think the shop lights work well, but there's, I, there's something to those, making sure it gets all the way down. Sometimes, like this tank behind me, yeah. this is a no filter tank, and it's just got the hood light on it. Here's oh yeah, yeah. And it does really well, but all those plants grow tremendously slower. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But it's a uh, jungle valve and some Anubis in there. But that light, it it doesn't go, it's not as bright at the bottom and you can over some of these other ones. But Yeah. Well, you know, when you've got those lower light plants, a lot of times that works out fine anyways. You know what I mean? I, I tell people, you know, they'll buy, um, I was talking about this yesterday on my live stream, they'll buy java fern and they'll buy anubius petite nana and they'll buy um i don't know uh something with a bulb like uh like a red tiger lily or something like that uh, and then they're like well you know i still have nitrates in my tank uh and it and stuff isn't growing like i wanted and it's like you could have the strong, you could have the sun, you know, mm -hmm. beating down on that. And, and there's just some plants that don't grow that fast in, in the sun. I mean, they may look a little better having a little more light, even if they're low light plants, but they can only grow so fast. They can only use the, the nitrites and the nitrates so quickly. So, mm -hmm. um, it's you might as well just grow them slow and steady and, mm -hmm. and, uh, in the shadows sort of, so, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, because some of them definitely, I've noticed I've had to switch things around because I've been doing live plants for what, like a year and a half at the most, maybe. And I didn't know anything about any plants before I started. And some tanks do really well <laughs> and other tanks don't. 
and I've learned that some sometimes they don't need all that light. And sometimes you just yeah. got to shove things around until you know. And like, it, I think it's the penny, is it penny wart? Is that the, I can't remember the names. I can't grow that in anything. But now all of a sudden in that Splendid tank, it's growing and I can't grow it for anything. Down here. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I think my my signal froze or something, and so. It, oh, uh, that, that's all right. No, I was happens. gonna say hi to everybody in the chat, and mm -hmm. let's see. Big Renzo had a question earlier about how easy fathead minnows are to breed, and then there was another question, and Catfish Terry's in yeah, here, so I got to give him his yeehaw. That's right, yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> and I seen Big Tank Hank was in here. There's a bunch of cool people in here. Mary Page was in here. Mm -hmm. They were just going. You guys got on the plant, so I was just mm -hmm. listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to see everybody in here. You know, like I, I was saying that um, the other day on one of my streams too. That uh, when I was in the, I had when I had to go in the hospital most recently. I've always had health problems off and on, but when I had to go in. Um, no one could come back with me. Like my wife couldn't. And, and I mean, I, I, I have friends in real life, you know, in real life. Uh, but my, you go, know, my YouTube, my fish community, you guys really are true friends. You know, a lot of people I know better online. I know their stories and things way better than I know, you know, coworkers or things from the past that I've, I've considered friends. And so, um, it was so uplifting between that and then my birthday uh, a couple weeks ago and everything um, to, to hear from everybody and like the positivity, like, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a special community mm -hmm. on fish tube. Um, you get some argumentative corners that are kind of, you know, touchy, but for the vast majority of spots, unlike a lot of topics or um, sections of YouTube, um, mm -hmm. we're, we're really lucky to have a cool, a group of people um, yes. that are smart and continuously teaching me new things, um, you mm -hmm. know, so it's, yeah, it's, you, it's, I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> You've said it better than I could. I am so thankful and grateful for the community. And if it wasn't for this select group of people, I probably wouldn't be on YouTube in any form or <laughs> way. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I, I, there's something to that for sure in, in the sense that like, if I was just broadcasting to the wall, you know, or whatever, you know, to my phone, um, and didn't feel like there's someone on the other side, you know, that I'm talking to. Um, I mean, obviously right now I'm talking to you, but, uh, I feel like uh, I'm actually talking just with like a family member or a friend who happens to be, you know, online when I'm making my videos and, if yeah. it didn't feel that way, I, I don't know how long I could continue it. It just feels like a self-indulgent, <laughs> you know, thing otherwise. So, well, YouTube's yeah. hard enough without having some reason to keep going in the community and just the stuff that I learn from everybody on a daily basis is I'm thankful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's, it's grown so much in the last five years too. Um, when I started my channel, which is coming up on, well, I guess it probably is about five years. I mean, it's kind of hard to say when I started cause I, I did a couple of videos, but not really thinking of it as a channel. I just kind of put them up there mm -hmm. um, for myself as kind of a place to store video. Um, but you know, now it's it was like it was like aquarium co-op had like i don't know 30,000 subscribers and they were other than um king of diy who had a ton but and rachel o'leary had a lot at the time too um but other than those two really you know there was like dustin's fish tanks he was probably bigger than aquarium co-op at the time and so it's just crazy how things have evolved and changed i just saw the video from aquarium co-op's new warehouse mm -hmm. i don't know if you saw that video the other day but 
-hmm. holy cow like i mean i live in the same town and i i did not realize the the amount of uh, infrastructure investment that had gone into that i mean there's millions of dollars there mm -hmm. so to see things like that growing and and people who start started you know channels just like me or you or anyone else mm -hmm. um and then found a niche of like what it is they thought needed some work in the hobby and now things are, are really growing and changing and to actually have the fortune of knowing these people because you know we're just normal people they are too you know when when you chat with them and whatnot um to kind of get in on that that process is kind of like a really magical and cool mm -hmm. thing um in my opinion you know it's like a chance to kind of shape the hobby um there's a lot of movers and shakers in it i mean there's still big business behind the scenes that are going to control a lot of things but um there's enough of us together online now you know there's a few million that if a trend gets going or whatnot you you really do see the the response even <laughs> corporately so like the rimless tanks coming out by fluval um i remember it was three three years ago i was discussing that with uh an aquascaper named steve waldron who lives in seattle he did all the amazon mm -hmm. corporate um ponds and tanks and stuff and i worked for him for a while and um he was just saying, you know, America's not ready. Like the flu ball has, has said, you know, that aquascaping is just, it's too much of patience and, and detail. And mm -hmm. that's just not the American market. People want like big, pretty fish that they, they don't need to take care of. They want a couple bottles to add and then set mm -hmm. it and forget it. And, you know, that was his take and he's been in the hobby a long time, but literally from that take, to now I see so much more of the dirted tank thing going around and the rimless and the aquascaping and the nano fish and native fish. And so mm -hmm. it, it's really changing and they're having to uh, react, you know, uh, mm -hmm. or, or not having to, but they're going to because they want to make that money. So yeah. uh, 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 adapting their, their market. Well, mm -hmm. I, I've been on fish tube for like three and a half years or so yeah. maybe now and i never even heard of the word aquascaping until like <laughs> three years ago maybe i was like what is aquascaping like yeah oh you want to make them like i never thought like i wanted the fish to be happy with what was in the tank but i never gave any thought to what the tank looked like i just took care of the fish sure yeah so that whole aspect of it is something just being on YouTube brought me into and I'm I'm glad it did because it's a whole other <laughs> side of the hobby that I just had no idea about. And then talking and meeting a couple people from overseas in Europe and how they have such a big focus on that that I oh, was yeah. like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean there was um there was a contest. I it, you know, I, I feel like I hope it hasn't peaked, you know what I mean? But th about four years ago, I think it was, in Singapore, there was a contest that was an aquascaping contest that you could submit photos from home. Mm -hmm. And if, I think it was like a three-minute video clip or something that you had to put together. Um, and then you wrote a couple paragraphs. But the, the prize was one million cash, like in U.S. dollars. Um so that's no joke, you know, that's yeah. like uh, competitive sports or something almost, <laughs> you know, so, um, and I did uh, early on when the channel was starting, um, if you guys have seen Bentley Pasco's channel before, um, mm -hmm. he's someone who lives in my town, and uh, I toured his fish room, and that video did so well that he launched his own channel, you know, because he'd wanted to, and I think he had a couple videos kind of for his own, you know, friends and family just to show things off. But um, same deal, like, you find these niches of, like, oh, there's 100,000 people who like rainbow fish? Like, mm -hmm. um, who would have thought? Like, you mm -hmm. know, so I, I keep getting surprised. I'll cover a topic kind of on a whim and then find out that there's this whole world of people into mm -hmm. it. And um, 
it's kind of like I just scratched the surface and learned a few little basics and then, you know, the, the community will take it away from there and teach me um, mm -hmm. more, you know. Mm -hmm. So same with like the all the nitrogen videos I've been kind of making, talking about um, like the real nitrogen cycle. I mean, I mean we understand uh, the, the oxygen rich nitrogen cycle pretty well um in a hot in the hobby uh if if you care to i mean sure there's people who just are fish keepers who are like i don't know i just have fish and they they live you know <laughs> but um if you care to know at all about the cycle pro process of it um that's pretty well known but i, I decided to kind of go deeper into like well okay so how does the nitrogen get out of the soil and back into the atmosphere and, and you know, what bacterias are there and where do they live? And can we steal any of that uh, natural technology for our aquariums, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And um, I've had just a crazy amount of people contact me from that video. It's, it's not that popular of a video as far as like, I think it's got like a thousand, just over a thousand views or something, which isn't that, you know, not that, not a ton. Um, but <laughs> there's been, I think like 15 or 16 professors mm -hmm. that have messaged me and either had something to add or they're like, well, you know, I'm on this side of the argument that this, this, and this is going on. And uh, you know, I'm learning with you guys on some of these videos. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I'll spend a week or two researching and then I'll try to make a video to the best of my understanding and knowledge of the mm -hmm. subject. Um, and, and that's sometimes what those really dry or like history videos, you know, it's not like I remember the first woman to invent, you know, the first aquarium and what city she had an expo in and what year and all that kind of stuff necessarily. But, um, you know, I'll have a note pad and outline of kind of those key points and then mm -hmm. go through it. And then from there, though, a lot of times I learn so much more just by people commenting and mm -hmm. getting involved. Um, but with this one, I, I really unlocked a, a can of worms. Uh, I've got <laughs> waste management uh, supervisors that have messaged me, three of them, three different waste management guys have been like, that's, that's uh, like one guy's like, that's exactly how it works. And another's like, that's not what we do here in Barcelona at all. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm just talking about nature and aquariums. Uh, I don't know what you do at your septic or your sewage treatment plant, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he's sending me formulas of like, you know, different um, chemical breakdowns and which bacteria mm -hmm. doesn't, which order, which is great. I mean, so, to take the time to, to send that and to even want to debate it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes you have to figure out like, okay, where, where do I draw the line on the tangent? Like how deep down the rabbit hole do we go? Um, but that's, that's kind of the fun part of my channel for me is like, mm -hmm. um, I feel like it, it naturally draws in a lot of people who are teachers themselves, whether they think of themselves as that or not. But, mm -hmm. you know, in our chat right now, we've got a ton of them, a lot of people with channels of their own or who are fish keepers and help other people with advice. Um, and so I think the, the, the rabbit trails or the, <laughs> the long side winding path of, um, some of these things I, I look into, um, I think they definitely, uh, I, that's my favorite part about the channel. And I think it definitely, we have a good crew of people um, you know, there's there's an expanded universe, so to speak, of a few thousand people that come in and out of uh, certain, you know, I, I kind of see your channel, my channel, Father Fish, um, you know, um, Peck Tech's probably on the bigger end of things in, mm -hmm. in there. But there's a lot of people who watch all the same channel. Like, you'll find Ginger Graves or, or Candy Overhauls or, you know, different people in in chats a lot, you know, or, or Chevy fish or Muppet. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's really cool to see that, that overlap. Um, and that, that core community, that core couple hundred people that have the time and energy and devote it to the being a part of the conversation, um, mm -hmm. really helps connect people like you and I, you know, like if it weren't for Mary page, I probably wouldn't have gotten 
in contact, you know, chatted with you and been able to sort this out. I, yeah. I never had live streamed with any other people unless they were here in person, like um, Dustin's Fish Tanks or Lucas Brett's or um, Redfish Bluefish Jason. Um, those, those people and, or, or, or Bentley or uh, Dean Master Breeder, Dean Tweedle. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those people are people that I live near or that have visited yeah. and I've had on the, just because. But uh, it, it was really – it's a very recent thing. And probably because of the um, – we'll call it the uh, illness going around town uh, <laughs> that we've kind of had to adapt and figure out, you know, like, well, we can't get together in person. Uh, so let's show up on each other's channel this way. And uh -huh. so – so it's opened my my channel specifically quite a bit. I know other people have channels where they have a panel every single day, but I just that's that's not the way the format was when when I started or probably when you started either, you know what I mean? But the last 2 years I've really seen a lot of that growing and um I like to incorporate some of that. Although when you get to a certain size as a channel, I think um just having an open panel is just a recipe for disaster if you let anybody come up uh, I can see that <laughs> sometimes. <a little> bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. So I was just curious as your channel, I mean, you've been around a while now um, as well. Where, where do you want to go as a channel? Do you have aims? I mean, do you want to open a website that sells uh, guppies or do you want to do research or I mean like what what are your aims or, or hopes do you have any um, any uh, end game or or route that you're looking into I just want to do this as long as it's I possibly can but sure. I'm hoping to use it to kind of get it into school <laughs> if anybody cool. out there can works at a college and wants to be my advisor email me <laughs> <laughs> that would cool. be great. But I'm working on a website right now, but I'm not having any plans of selling fish because that just seems so hard. In yeah. My but I want to do my mom makes my shirts for me. So I would like to sell some shirts and kind of give her a second job that's more fun than the restaurant type of thing. Yeah, sure. And I have, I would like to sell some botanicals. We have her, I use, it's a Missouri catapa tree and they're oh, not cool. as. Mm, as the West Indian leaves, but the shrimp love them. They don't oh, laugh. They just they break down a little bit quicker, but yeah. they work really well. So I want to press some of those and sell them like in a ten pack. But really, yeah. just kind of helping promote the hobby, learning, you know, spreading the love <laughs> that I have for the hobby. I don't have like any. Like I want to meet this goal by this date. And yeah, yeah, I'm not that way either. Fun. Like this really is my social circle, and I look sure. for chats and talking to people. So as as long as you know, I get to be a part of the my friends. You know? Yeah, no, I'm but, the same way with that. Know, this is I, definitely my circle. There is a point when where I was I was shooting videos just for school just to get help for my research project and there is a point where i kind of went down the rabbit hole of learning how to do youtube and watching the how to do youtubers and mm -hmm. getting a structure to my video and i was just putting way too much pressure on trying to be a good editor and sound and then the tanks yeah. were kind of and i was just you i needed to take a step back and not just have fun with the videos and make what you like. So, I yeah, well, and that's any. Oh, sorry. Long term plans. I just want to have a website, help mom, so you know, sell some T-shirts for mom, and just see what happens. But really, I I would really like to get into grad school. And the wait list around here has been two and a half years now, trying Oof. to wait for an open spot with an advisor. So even if there's like, there's a couple programs online that I'm looking into, but if, yeah, if anything out of the channel, get me an advisor for college, that would be great. <laughs> nice. So what, um, do you have a program in mind that you're looking for, you know, like sustainable ecology or, you know, marine well, biology? The one, around, the one around here that I applied for was freshwater biology. Okay. 
but I would really like, I'm really fascinated with the, the aquatic health and vet services. And if I could yeah. get into something like that, that would be my number one. Let me help you. <laughs> let me get in. There. But I, anything in the hobby, whatever will take me at this point, whatever sure. program will take me before my GRE scores expire. Cause I don't want to take oh, that. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a nightmare. <laughs> <sighs> I had to do that because I, I got an archaeology degree. And so I should have probably like I, I don't use my archaeology degree whatsoever uh, in any career, uh, you know, uh, capacity. But I do have to say, like, if everything from anatomy to biology to um, geology to um, meteorology, I mean, there yeah. it, it really incorporated a lot that has helped me understand cycles and, and and scientific ideas uh mm -hmm. in in this hobby you know mm -hmm. um but as far as getting my money back you know by working as an archaeologist no not really probably in the cards and i always wonder like should i have gone all the way and gotten you know um gotten a, a, a doctorate or something or would that have even been a more of a waste you know or, or whatever so not a waste but uh it's a bill, you know, that you have to pay off eventually. So, uh, off. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's some things, though, that you can get into that are, and if, and if you're focused and you know what you want, like, mm -hmm. they really do open up so many doors for you once you get that degree or whatnot, you know, like medicine or law or, um, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool um so you do. i i je, mary just sent me his email so yeah i'm going to be sending an email soon <laughs> to steven the biologist i was like oh, i yeah. want to talk to you <laughs> and i couldn't Steve find him anywhere so steven's yeah. a smart guy yeah i He's know smart guy. like you it's like how do you guys how do you my brain doesn't work like that <laughs> and sometimes like it's I'll watch your videos or watch some videos and you'll say something. And I'm like, I forgot I knew that. Like I was stored in my brain somewhere, but I just didn't I do that. remember that I knew I that. I do that with jokes. Like someone will tell me a joke. And if you ask me to tell you a joke right now, I probably couldn't think of one. Mm -hmm. But you tell me a joke and there's a good chance that I'm like, oh, I remember the punchline. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, but I, for the life of me, I can't, I can't tell you what one of the jokes is off the top of my head uh -huh. so i understand that pain uh -huh. <laughs> all too much yeah i'll run across something i'm like i i forgot i knew that and it sounds probably kind of crazy but i'm like yeah i completely forgot <laughs> oh no um what was i gonna say oh how many strains of guppies are you keeping right now or endlers or you know like live uh bears i should say Two. I don't even know. I have more tanks of the, I can't pronounce the name of it. It's the Persilia Obscura, the hidden. Oh, gummy. yeah. It's yeah. a relatively new. I've been trying to work with that one to build up. I didn't have very many at the time, but now I have two tanks of those. I'm trying to build it up. Then I have like cool. a blue and pink tuxedo. Oh, nice. I have some, they're not in class inlers, but they're they're more wild type inlers. And then I have some inlers from Jeffro that he sent to me. Just a bunch of mutt ones. I have some green cobra inlers and some red cobra. I saw those green cobras on your channel, yeah. And then this one, this 55 over here is just filled with randomness. I kind of just like the ran the random Oh mutt. yeah. <laughs> that's that's so pretty when when you see I that. Yeah. Some like order some in, but right now it's just too cold and I'm really yeah. decisive. And there for a while, the only place I was really picking up new fish was at the auctions. And we haven't been to the auctions in a while. So I'm yeah. just waiting. That's so hard. I mean, I, that's where I get most of my fish too. And like, other than knowing I want X fish and emailing my local fish club or Facebook group or whatever, it's, it's so frustrating to not, have access to just seeing what's out there right now, you know, because you can get such good deals or trades or even free fish. Like someone will have, you know, a geophagus or, you know, little, um, 
shell dwellers and you know they'll have oh i had 100 babies i don't know what to do with them somebody just have them you know mm-hmm. versus pay $25 a piece for these little fish you know what i mean it's, so it's yeah i miss that the in person aspect of this a lot um yeah <laughs> that's rough um, I did. That. Yeah. I always thought I was so antisocial and I'm like, I don't, I'd rather be by myself than in a group. And then that was taken away and I didn't even realize how much yeah. I do enjoy going out <laughs> and seeing people. Sure. And, but I think that honestly, the only people I do miss is the fish people because it's Aqua Shell and the fish auctions are about the only thing I do miss. He's not lying. <laughs> <laughs> the Aqua Shell thing. So I had had enough money to go. And then my wife and I were getting married. So we didn't go, what, five years ago? Then four years ago, um, I got sick. And I had tickets. Like, I literally had tickets. Mm -hmm. And then three years ago, uh, yeah, I also had tickets and had to sell them. So I'm so bitter about the fact that I've still never been to an aquashella or a aquatic uh, experience. Mm-hmm. That's uh, the one that I, I wish I would have went. Yeah. So, so I was supposed to definitely go um, to those. Like Lucas Bretz was the one who was like, you got to come. Mm-hmm. And seeing the video from a few years back of the, the fish tube kind of group there i i'm like oh why did i miss out on that it looked like so much fun like you know um but i was really pretty isolated as a channel um for a lot a lot of the time that i've existed as a channel you know i've just like i mean obviously people go in in between other channels on my my subs but i I didn't do a lot of collaborations and I just don't live near a ton of people who do have other people on their channel a ton, you know, people like, uh, Bob Steenfot, you know, he's, I know in my chat with him, he lives about an hour and a half North of me. Um, but it's just, he does kind of a talk show format or videos, you know what I mean? And so, uh, it's less common to, to see, uh, like this format or whatnot. So, um, it felt like this whole shutdown of everything has kind of opened up people a little bit more on their channel to like seeing ourselves as all in the same boat or all in the same Mm -hmm. uh, field of, of, of content creation, you know, whereas before it was a little bit almost secretive or competitive in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's broken that up a little bit, which is kind of nice. So. It did that for me because I never would have even thought of reaching out and being like, hey, do you want to be on the live stream before yeah. I talk with Shelly? Because I was just like, they have a, they know more than me. They keep more fish than me. What would I have to bring to the conversation? And it wasn't until I got to meet them and realized that they, they even though they are superstars in my head, they are actually really nice and they take the time to talk. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, yeah. I can reach out to. It's like we're all at the thank end of the Mary. day, you know. Thank you for the super sticker. Mm. And oh, thanks, and Mary. Aquatics, thank you for the super chat. Great guest, awesome stream. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Bob's awesome. He is. He He's is. He is. Like, how do you know so much? <laughs> I know. He has been a cheerleader and supporter and uh you know just organizer of the community for a a long while now i mean since it's since it's kind of taken on an organizational structure and having groups online and facebook and link over to youtube and needing mods and things like that he's been here and on the ball um yeah, a long time. So really impressive. Um, and mm-hmm. I like watching his his menagerie grow too. He's got way more fish and critters than I do. Um, but when I get a house, we'll see, Bob. Maybe maybe I'll be able to finally uh, outdo you. Probably not. My wife would probably kill me if I uh, <laughs> had aquariums just stacked in every room. You know, or not every room, but in in a bunch of more than two rooms. 
Well, I'm excited to see what your new fish room looks like when you get it. You know, on. we're still working it out because it's only a two bedroom house and then there's a den. And the den has an eight by eight, like eight foot tall by eight foot wide wall, basically. That that um, there's two walls like that that are obviously opposite to each other, and the thought is that I could probably have both those walls, and then maybe a spot for my big, um, the uh, like a 55 uh, rimless or whatever that has a stand in the center, mm -hmm. and then maybe some seats in the center of the room or a, or a futon or something, um, in for the den. So that's that's the. I guess worst case scenario. Um, and that still would allow me to have more tanks than I have currently. Mm -hmm. And then the best case is if my wife relents and just says, you can have the guest bedroom. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping for. If I keep it cleaner, uh -huh. you know, if I can take like an L shaped chunk of the uh, 12 by 10 wall, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a 12 foot wall and a 10 foot wall in that guest bedroom. And uh, I'd love to take, you know, about, 20 inches extending out from each of those walls mm -hmm. and, and, and build like a rack system there. Plus then we did, we did say that we want to put the all, f well, I guess there's four rimless tanks, but three of the rimless tanks anyways, we, we'll, we'll probably keep in the living room or kind of dining room kitchen area. Um, I don't know the the square footage in the house is less than 1200 square feet. So we'll still, We'll see that the actual house is pretty small, but we, we don't have kids or anything like that right now. So um, fun. hopefully yeah. the fish can be our kids. We got a super chat from Xanadu Doo, Doo, I believe. That's oh, it. yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Great stream. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was going to ask you one more question before I let you go. When it comes to moving, are, do you drain all your tanks down? Are you going to bag up your fish <laughs> and drain them down? Or are you just going to leave them in there and move them well you, we'll see because uh i have to move it's it's a very short distance which is like dangerous for my fish in, in ironically more so maybe because uh -huh. i'm gonna risk it you know what i mean like I, i'm probably gonna let them skitter around in an inch of water for it's literally like a three and a half mile drive now there's a bunch of lights and stuff so it takes about 20 minutes each way Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking if I have everything ready to go where I can just plug it right back in when I get there and start having a, someone help me fill fresh water. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing, though, is I need to test the water there and make sure that I mean, it's a, it's a 80 year old house, the structure. So um, I don't know if there's like a ton of iron and the TDS is going to be really high because of the pipes when you first turn uh -huh. things on. But, um, yeah, I'm going to hopefully keep things you know um I actually i'll show you real quick let me My I'll show you it's moving i moved that 30 gallon bow front it was two hours away. yeah and i drained it down to like to the point where i could lift it once i could lift it i stopped and then i saran wrapped the top real good and yep. just left them in there put it in the car and plugged it in at the new place and Everything was good, but that was my only experience moving tanks <laughs> significantly <laughs> besides just shelf to shelf. <laughs> yeah. So like this tank is going to be a challenge in that mm -hmm. it's built up soil all the way up to here. Mm -hmm. And then down here, you know, it's nice and low, but this without the pressure of water on it. And if, a, if there's a bump in the car, this whole thing could just slide out, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's all the plants and everything, but I mean, my, my hope is I'll drain it maybe to here mm -hmm. and it's only a 17 gallon rimless. So everyone will kind of be in some murky water right here, probably mm -hmm. for a while. I might take the epistos out, um, you know, take the pear out, but I think the CPDs and the gobies and snails and stuff like that will be okay. Mm -hmm. And then basically, um, I'll probably put uh, the hang off the back filter or any sponge filters in a five gallon bucket or something like that, you know, just to keep them wet and uh, maybe put a little pump in there or something. Uh, but that tank and then this tank is the other one I'm worried about um, is, I mean, if I've got deep substrate on a tank, 
I really don't want to lose the years of mm -hmm. it piling up and stratifying for me. But um, at the same time, like maybe it's time to redo it at the new house. It's just, you know, it is expensive at also, you know, to, to uh, buy all the new aqua soils and stuff like that all over again. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think, I think that these tanks will be super easy to move. You know, they don't have the deep substrate. They just have, yeah. A bunch of fish so for those ones i'll definitely just drain them probably 80 to 90 percent and move them even the 20 lungs will be like that um and uh take out any big rocks the problem is like the big rocks are the skeleton of this tank here and so if i were to take out those rocks all this lasagna layering of filtration mm -hmm. you know that's nine inches deep at the very back Mm -hmm. could come sliding forward um granted it's only a month or two months old so i guess that's a little bit uh less worrying in that you know well it's it's new enough that it's not like i've got some five-year-old cycled tank that uh, mm -hmm. is needs to be kept but between between the big 40 right here and the um 40 rimless upstairs and the forty <laughs> and the forty uh, two bow front, those ones I I am kind of worried about. Like, well, how how exactly am I going to pull this off? The bow front is you is pretty used in the sense that it's moved with three other people other than me, and mm -hmm. so we'll we'll see <laughs> yeah. how it holds up. That one, you know, that one is kind of an awkward size and everything too. Is is funky as it is, and so it might need to just um, be swapped out because I, I bought a new, another 55 and another 40 mm -hmm. breeder that are totally brand new from the dollar per gallon sale that I plan to set up at the new house. So, wow. but I mean, this substrate, even if I drain it and there's like an inch of water, I mean, that's still going to be five inches or yeah. so. That's going to be way too heavy. I'm going to need like four people to carry <laughs> Well, that's exactly what Daniel in the chat said. He said, get extra sets of hands, and I was already going to recommend it because I've, I've moved some heavy tanks before. <laughs> yeah, it's the rimless one that I'm scared of too. I mean, it is made out of a thicker glass, which is nice, mm -hmm. but definitely we just can't torque it at all. No twisting forces or, you know, anybody holding by pulling or pushing, you know. Mm -hmm. You can get away with that on the rimless, you know, someone can kind of hold it other spots than just uh, on from the bottom. But this one will definitely need to be held each corner. And the other thing I was thinking, though, was do I want to get like a board like um, oh, well, what's that? caps? That, well, they're not made for fish tanks, but they make caps. You can go to a local hardware store and they make caps that you can put that'll um, you'll have to do some searching but they make caps that you can put on those corners to keep the pressure holding in oh nice yeah yeah that's definitely a great idea thank you yeah i know they uh, have those handles those suction handles too at harbor freight that you can like suction cup them yeah to glass and it might help lift it a little bit but i haven't yeah it, so i don't know if it works but it seemed like it would work <laughs> that is one thing that i've thought about too. yeah is the ones that ha also have the lever where you kind of like crank it down and it really holds on mm -hmm. so you, I, I might do that um but what i've done in the past is i've always gotten a piece of plywood or something real rigid like uh -huh. better than plywood like you know um multi-layered boards and stuff like that like hard boards and things but there's the same stuff that you make um cutting boards out of uh oh yeah that stuff you can buy in sheets yeah it's not cheap but um <laughs> that would work really well as a rigid thing uh to put underneath this and it's then have four laminate board. board yeah exactly so that's kind of what i'm thinking for that and then you know all the canisters and all that other stuff will be easy to deal with after that but um it, it's almost going to take uh, the plan right now is when I move, my dad wants to help me and we're either going to build or buy shelving at the house. I mean, I've already got all the measurements, so I'll decide all that ahead of time. 
but we'll do that like the first day we can get in there. And then um, as much as my wife wants to move all these books and knickknacks and things like that, that we've got, I think we're going to build shelving for both the tanks and for books and stuff like that. Any, any shelving we need. And then a day or two later, we're going to move things. But on the day that I move them, I'm definitely going to need to have like me and one other person who knows mm -hmm. about tanks, just helping me fill while I go pick up another one and come back and, you know, 15 or 20 minutes each way over and over again. And mm -hmm. hopefully we'll just kind of grind it out and get it done. And, uh, you know, I expect probably a 10 to 15% loss of plants and fish, honestly, you know, just from the stress and kicking mm -hmm. up ammonia or maybe you slide everything one way and yeah. things happen. But um, I mean, hopefully not, but that's just kind of the realistically in my head, like that would be still a win if I could get out away with it for without those yeah. anything worse than that. So, well, thanks yeah. for talking to me today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> this is awesome, but I'm going to go check on the little one and I'm going to let you go, but thank you again. <laughs> He's out of here. Peace. He gone. He gone. Thank you, Alex, for being here. And thank you guys, everybody in the chat for being here. It was a... Oh, he's back. Right. Sorry, I heard check on the little ones. When I turned the camera around, it froze my internet and just crashed it again. Sorry. I was like, he's gone. But yeah. He, he, he peaced out. That yeah, I was in a hurry. I hit the internet for like an hour before they start peeking out of the room going, Mom. Mom. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> My wife does that with, are you going to help with the chores or are you going to cook dinner or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. I get the same thing. So I understand. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having me on the show though. It's been, it's yeah. been fun. You'll have to come on my channel sometime yeah. and uh, you know, I, I'm going to do a home show thing again. Uh, so if you have a couple tanks that you like, if you want to be a part of that too, you're yeah. more than welcome. Of course. Awesome. So. Yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. Have a good night. Thanks everyone in the chat for showing up. Uh, and hello to those of you I don't know. And thanks for coming. Those of you who we share as viewers or my viewers, uh, you know, all of you, thanks for coming out. So it's thank awesome. you. And super chatters for sure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep. And thanks to everybody for being here. Appreciate yeah. it. Next week is Furloughs Aquatics is going oh, to right be on. the show. And it's right on. And then Jeff Rose is going to be Valentine's Day. And then the week yeah, after Phoebe that and Jeff Rose Valentine's Day. is Catfish Terry. So. Ooh, yeehaw. That's right. Yeehaw. <laughs> but thanks, guys. I'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye. bye.